Hi, I'm Sherry from Homeschooling on a Wing and a Prayer blog. This is part two of the Exploring Creation with Biology by Apologia. I'm going to be discussing the notebooking. But I did want to clarify, in the first video it may have been a little misleading. When I said I had one student go through the science, I was referring to the chemistry. The general and physical science, I know the first two did. I cannot remember if the third child did. My fourth child did not. We have been doing master books, and you can see those videos. I'll put the playlist down below in the description box. But he will be doing the Exploring Creation with Biology, and all of my children have done that, or and or will. I'm not sure if this student will also do the chemistry. We'll see how it goes. We still have time. That said, I thought I would clear that up. So obviously you need to have the textbook. And as, like I said, as you're working through it, there's points where they have to do on your own questions, they have to do activities, they have to fill out study sheets and things like that. So you're going to need some way of keeping this all together. So what I will do, now initially I would either just use a college ruled spiral bound or you can use a composition book. I usually put my sciences in green folders and green binders and green notebooks for whatever reason, I just associate science with green, and that way it's easier for the student to spot. Obviously, you can use whatever you have. So again, uh, you can use the composition book. Now, the thing is, usually these are wide ruled. Sometimes I get lucky and I'm able to find college. So if you have a student who prefers the college ruled, you're going to have to go into more than likely a spiral bound or a bound notebook. These are the cheap ways of notebooking. They would just simply write the chapter and then write all the questions down and keep track of it. I'll show you how I had my daughter do it when we were using a composition book. This year I purchased the student notebook that obviously coordinates with the textbook. I do not believe this was available for my third child, so I have not used this, but I have looked through it it's pretty simplistic and I'll explain that in just a moment. Let's take a look. So like I said, you, you're going to need some, some place to keep this stuff. Or they could just use loose leaf and then put it in a three ring binder. However your student likes to work. This was my daughter's. Uh, she picked the psychedelic looking one. And back in the day I had the chapters marked with tabs. This is obviously her second one because it's the higher numbers. I couldn't find the first one. What she did here, though, is you know keep track of the different things with tabs. And then what you do in the beginning here, she would write down the name of the chapter and then any um, diagrams, prints, anything that I provided for her, she would put in here or she would create her own. Now many of these, as you can see, you can get from Enchanted Learning. You do have to be a member to get some of the downloads, some are free, you're just going to have to go on the site and look around. And trust me, it's really worth its weight in gold. It's not that expensive to be a member, and you will have access to all of their products, which is very nice. I used them a lot when my kids were younger. Here she just created a flip book that had definitions. Sometimes I would have the diagrams printed up for her to refer to. Here she did a where she was doing a lab work and she was drawing what she was seeing through the microscope. Again, we have the vocab flips. There was lots of them. And as you can see, you just kind of work your way through. Now that's how you can make it a little more exciting for the kids. Then we did a little bit on Mendel and I found this adorable SpongeBob Genetics. There's one and two. I still have to look up if it's still available, I'll put the link down below, but I found it at sciencespot.net. It's just an adorable little way of trying to figure out how genetics work. Obviously, using SpongeBob, most of us think he's adorable. Another thing I did do, and I'm going to put that link down below in the description box, was I had my kids build DNA strands out of licorice and marshmallows and toothpicks. They absolutely love that. The little kids can do it as well. In fact, when my daughter was doing this, my son was still in early elementary, and he was just digging it, and they had fun. So you can check out that post on my blog. Again, we've got vocab. 
sometimes, like here's the water cycle that came from Enchanted Learning, but then I had her draw it out, and that's what she did, and she used that as her study. This here, I'm not even sure where I found that. But then you can just go through. So you can search the web. You can find places to get these things and put them up on your own. Here she did the lab chart. And back in the day, that's what we'd have to print. And then she, anytime she did a lab, she'd have to fill it out. And then we just put it in like a book. <clears throat> Eventually you will get to diagrams. Enchanted learning. I'm sorry, not diagrams. Well, this is a diagram of it but you will get to dissections. And so it's always good to maybe first do a little layout of the land before you get in there and start slicing and dicing. This particular student absolutely refused to do the cutting of the critters. So her lab was not a full lab. It was instead a partial lab because she did do some work, but it was none of the dissection. And folks, you can do biology without that and still survive. I found the salmon life cycle paper somewhere. It's uh, cut off here, so I don't know if it told me where to find it. I'm going to have to look that up. If I do find it, I'll put the link down below. Again, search the web, search Pinterest, find those different places to get a hold of these different type of diagrams and things you can add into the notebook. And remember to try and add some fun, hands-on activities that may or may not be in the book. Now, in comparison, this all the work is pretty much done for you except for the hands-on stuff. It will correlate with the book. It gives you the table of contents. Again, go to Rainbow Resource. By the way, none of these are sponsored by anybody. I have purchased these items myself way back when, and I'm just sharing what I have here. You can go to their website, rainbowresource.com, and you can download certain parts of this so you can see what you would be buying. Now, in the beginning, it does give you a little introduction, and it tells you, you know, here's a way of, they call it a rubric, for figuring out how to grade. You may or may not use this. I more than likely will not. I have my own way of doing things, but hey, some of us need some help, and here it is. It kind of gives you an example, and then it leaves a couple pages blank where you can do this. As you can see here, they weight 35% of your grade on your experiment and 65% on your test. I do do it a little different. Maybe eventually I'll get that video out for you. Then it goes along with some student notes, tells them how important it is to take notes and how you can do it. And then it provides you with a schedule. This schedule is pretty tight though, and I will not be using it as it is. I will use it as a guide to create my own. One of the problems I have with this is they are giving you the study guide, on, I'm assuming like on a Wednesday. You can only study basically Thursday, and then you're already taking your test Friday. I don't like that. I would prefer that the student learns how to study kind of all along, and I like to give a little bit longer time in between. Now you really have to study, and here's your test. Another thing that we will not be doing is science five days a week. We don't usually even do school, but four days a week, and then a half day sometimes on that fifth. So I'm going to have to rework this. Again, here's another problem I have with this layout. Here they're getting the study guide for this unit, Module 4, taking that test. And then all of a sudden they have to study for the quarterly test and by Monday be taking the quarterly test. Again, I don't prefer to do it that way. Some of you may. I know when you get to college you may not have that much time, but usually they will give you a syllabus and tell you so you can kind of train yourself to study so that you're not pulling an all-nighter, one-nighter just prior to the test and really as soon as you take the test you lose information. I'd prefer my students learn how to study a little bit here and there and maintain and keep that data in their head. I just have some notes here for myself I thought I'd share. I'm just writing down I want to make a new schedule, what I'm allowing for then I need to locate a notebook and print up some extra pages like I had shown you in my daughter's I have to check my lab supplies. Again, if you want to see the microscope I use, I can do a quick little ditty on that as well. Now dissections. This student has made it clear he does not prefer to cut anything open. So I have a couple different options. I can, as I wrote here, get the real disgusting ones and just make him do it. There may still be some online dissections. I know I had my daughter do a couple of those. I haven't found those yet, but there may still be up. Or I might go to Teachers Pay Teachers, and one of the companies on there has 
printable dissection kits. So you would print the animal and then have the student build it and then they would put numbers on there and correlate it. Now one of the positives of that is once you have it, you own it, so you can use it for up and coming students. And unlike the real dissections, once you're done you have to toss it. This they can constantly come back to and refer to and look at it and open it and study it. So it's more long lasting and it's not as disgusting, obviously. They have a couple different kits or you can buy them individually. I believe they're stating that the one that has most of them that I want will be available uh, this spring. And then I may just end up purchasing the frog. I'm not sure yet, but it's about the same price. Again, this may be a little more spendy, but I will have more use of it down the road than if I purchased the actual critters to dissect. I do have some light listed because they have a kit that's been kind of washed a little bit more and the formaldehyde isn't as overpowering. So that's up to you, but he will be doing some type of dissection, whether through paper or real. I haven't figured it out. Now you can download, like I said, a couple different of these units on Rainbow Resource. Now one of the things I was like, what is this page for? Well, I went back to the student section and it shows them how to use this paper to take notes as they're reading through their book. Some kids may like this layout, some kids may bulk. I may have him put the extra sheets of paper in here of whatever we're doing that's extra for each module and teach them a different way to take notes. I don't know yet. I haven't figured that out. <clears throat> and then you will get, I think it's like 1, 7, and maybe 13 is available to download. So you can really check out a couple different. So here they have on your own questions. They already have the questions that correlate to where they're asking in the book, and then they leave plenty enough space for the student to answer. Love that. And then it will walk it through. Here's your definitions, your terms, more questions, much, much, much more questions. And then here is a summary, and every unit will have this. What they'll do is they'll take their vocab and try and put them into these spaces. I might use this more like a pre-quiz, pre-test quiz for him just to make sure he's grasped it, grasped it before we take the test. I don't know, again I haven't used this before so we're just going to kind of experiment and see how we do. Uh, let me go to module 13. Now module 13 is a lovely uh, here we go, the phylum chordata, and it talks about different things again. You check this out, I'm just going to zip through this real fast, but it's the fish. So here in the end, they're going to be taking the diagram of the fish and then writing all the, labeling all the parts and what it does. And then on the back, they're just labeling the different parts of the parts. Now we're getting a little more detailed, the arteries and such. And then again, you have the vocab fill in, and then they also have a page where they can test their memory and fill all this in. Again, a great way to study for the test. So that's just an example of what you get in here. Now this again is the more expensive version of notebooking. I believe I spent about 25, 26 bucks on this. It's on sale at different places at different times. Just check it out. Frankly for me, it's just going to be a time saver. I don't have to print a lot of things, and it's all in one spot for him, and I'm happy about it. I know they also have these for the other um, sciences, too. So check those out. Again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Click the links down in the description box that take you to some of these different places if I can find them. And be sure to watch the first video so you understand what this program is about. All right, folks, till next time, thanks for watching.